Welcome to this week's edition of Good Books Radio. Audiobooks.com is the cheap underwriter for Good Books Radio, which is produced by UTRGV Media Services for Rio Grande Valley Public Radio. And now here's your host, David Hinojosa. Welcome to Good Books Radio. This is your host, David Hinojosa. And during this edition, I'll be talking with the founding editor of the lifestyle blog, Ramshackle Glam. She's also the author of two parenting and style memoirs. Her hobbies include creating unnecessary complications, insomnia, and maintaining an impressive collection of fake plants. She lives in California with her two children, her elderly Shih Tzu, and twin orange cats. And she's here to talk about her new book, The Big Activity Book for Anxious People. My guest today is Jordan Reed. Jordan, welcome to the program. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Are you feeling anxious today or generally pretty good? I'm always anxious. <laughs> <laughs> it's the human condition. It, it is. It is. Um, well, your book, I found your book very interesting. It was very entertaining. It was funny. It was uh, It was great. I really enjoyed it. But before we get into the book, I'd like to first begin talking about a little bit about your background. So you created Ramshackle Glam blog. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about what that is and what it entails? Yeah, so I um, I actually started blogging, uh, I started Ramshackle Glam about 10 years ago, which makes me essentially a dinosaur in, <laughs> <laughs> in the digital media world. Um, but this was back in like the days when influencer was not a word yet. Um, you know, no one made money off of a, a blog. Like, uh-huh. it, you know, it was a personal diary. And I sort of entered the space and thought to myself, I, I feel like there's an opportunity here to grow a business. Yeah. And um, so I've sort of seen the the blogging and social media industry undergo all the shifts, like in real time. Um, I've been there through like when Instagram wasn't even a thing, and then Instagram came out, and then um, that sort of changed the landscape. Um, so it's been really interesting, and the, the tenor of the blog has evolved over time. I, I started out doing a lot of fashion and beauty, and, and over time, I found that my focus changed to parenting and um, and mental health, really. Mm-hmm. And that's been a big focus lately, especially now. Um, I, I just went through a divorce, and so now I'm sort of writing a lot about, about that experience, which has been really interesting, because there's this huge community of people out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't know that they were reading all along, but now they're they're sort of speaking up, and it's it's actually quite beautiful. I'm, I'm I'm very glad uh, for the success uh, of your of your blog. It's uh, it's you. also yeah. Uh, it's also I also read that it's um, your blog has been featured in uh, publications such as Time Magazine, Cosmopolitan, the New York Observer, the Washington. The, I'm sorry, the Huffington Post and Lonnie, and has been spun off into three web series and three books. Could you tell us a little bit about this, please? Yeah, uh, so the site, I, I mean, I've just worked, I've, like I said, I've been at it for so long that I sort of am one of the, I say I'm one of like the OG bloggers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, back then it was like like six of us running around, you know, going to events and writing about them. Yeah. Um, and so, the sh- yeah, I've actually uh, spun off the blog into a few shows. One of them was called Jordan in the House, which uh-huh. I did not name. I did not <laughs> I hated the title so much. Uh-huh. But it was um, it was a home decor show where I sort of went around and just went to different places that I loved and found personally inspiring and tried to figure out how to bring the the decor style of that location into my own home. So like a rockabilly bar or um, like I don't know. Like I went I mean I went everywhere. Uh-huh. That's, it was very cool. It yeah, was fun. It sounds like a lot of fun and it sounds like, you know, just, you know, your blog has become this big, really big thing. That's that's amazing. Uh, now, in, in your blog, uh, I read that you studied cognitive neuroscience at Harvard. Could you tell I us did. about that experience? Uh, that's very interesting. Oh, uh, well, um, not to my parents. They're a little annoyed. <laughs> How come? <laughs> I don't know. It's so weird. Um, they, yeah, I, I was an actress when I was a teenager and then, and then yeah, I went to Harvard and, and did cognitive neuroscience and then just didn't use that like at all. And <laughs> just, I graduated and just went back out to LA and, and continued being an actress. And, but you know, it was obviously an amazing experience, but, um, yeah, I mean, I'm really good at like, if, if we're playing like cranium, like I know all sorts of random <laughs> facts. <laughs> okay, well, that brain. helps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but that's awesome. Uh, now, you also authored uh, two memoirs on parenting and style. Are, are these uh, 
the same as the um, the what I mentioned uh, brief uh, previously about your blog, or are these other books that you? Came so my first two books were um, were yeah, parenting and style memoirs. I think like my mom and maybe two other people read them. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I'm very happy I have them. They're very nice. But um, no, the the first book that sort of um, really took off was my my co-author and I wrote of this of the anxiety book. We wrote the big fat activity book for pregnant people, okay, um, which was just a humorous um, exploration of of the state of being pregnant, um, and and that ended up sort of being becoming a thing and really speaking to a lot of women, I think. And so then we were like, oh, what should we do next? And so we decided let's do anxiety. What's more funny than anxiety? Right. That, well, yeah. I mean, that's uh, it's such a broad topic, right? The anxiety. Everybody has some sort of anxiety. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, levels, I sleep right? with my phone under my pillow. I'm anxious even in my sleep. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I don't recommend that, by the way. Don't do that. <laughs> now, how did... Uh, okay, so you, you came up with the uh, anxiety or, or the, the subject of anxiety to put into a book. How did, did you just... Um, I don't know, were you just having coffee and you were like, you know what, let's just do this? Or did it come from maybe an experience that you and your co-author had? Or how, how did this come about? You know, the, so the first page in the book that I actually sat down and wrote is the page about how to DIY your own underground bunker. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, and that came from a conversation I was having with my best friend. And we were just saying how exhausting it is. Every morning we wake up and we're like, oh, my God, something bad happened again. <laughs> and it's just bad, bad, bad. And, and we were saying we should just let's just buy a bunker, like just in case, just to have like in our back pocket because you never know. And we were like, let's Google that. And you can actually buy a bunker. Right. Like, really? <laughs> you can buy one. But they're about two hundred thousand dollars. Oh, so. right. The price of. <laughs> so then yeah. I was like, okay, so let's say, let's just say, I wanted to, and you know, the answer to how to DIY a bunker is be an engineer. Like, don't don't be me, be someone else. <laughs> um, but I said in the book, I say the alternative to building your own bunker is to buy one of those pop up tents they sell at Target, get inside with your blankie, and listen to "We Are the World" on repeat. <laughs> <laughs> but that wouldn't effective. be much protection, would it? I mean, the, no, from a but you'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> it gives you the illusion of protection, I guess. I exactly. <laughs> now, on a level of one to ten, how anxious do you consider yourself to be regularly? Um. Uh, well, like right now, uh, this is the day that our book comes out. It's sort of like having a child, like the day your your book comes out. So I would give myself like a 15 today. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also got up really early. I'm really a little tired. Um, and uh, but and it's like I'm going through a divorce and just moved and have two little kids. Like I'm allowed to be pretty anxious, I think. Like it would be weird if I wasn't. Um, but no, I have my coping mechanisms. And um, I think we all, you know, we all have our things that we do. And so that's something that's in the book too, like sort of just little ways to make it better and ways to sort of feel less, you know, less alone in this whole anxious world we're living in. Right. And uh, before writing the book, how uh, did you cope with anxiety? Uh, What what were some of these activities that you would engage in to? Um, I think I coped with Zola. Mostly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anything else that's not required anything, medication? Anything more helpful? Uh, <laughs> um, no, I, I, uh, I think like you know, medit- It does. Meditating does help. It's annoying, but um, <laughs> but it, it really does. Um, what doesn't help is people telling you. You know, just breathe. Just, just breathe through it. Right. Um, and it's in your book, that, that, That's in your book, actually. It is, oh, of course it's in the book. Just yes. like things people say to you that don't help. Like, <laughs> oh, my God, my uncle had anxiety and he died. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, great. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. <for> <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> or people just send you YouTube videos and just, you know. Right. For, like the constant, you know, this really helped my Aunt Lydia. <laughs> you, should watch, you should watch this YouTube video. <laughs> now, uh, what do you think? Uh, do you think exercise uh, helps with anxiety, or do you think it, it actually? I mean, I, I'm probably the wrong person to ask. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know I wrote a book about anxiety, but I would definitely not write a book about exercising. Okay. Um, but no, of course, like all of, like all of the things that make you more present, and that's why um, we really wanted to make this 
an activity book because it's not like you can, you don't have to sit down and read this book. You right. just pick it up and do a page or flip around and it really helps you engage with what you're doing as opposed to like constantly, you know, we have, I tell my son one screen at a time because he's got the TV and he's playing a video game and then he's, you know, playing another video game on my phone and it's, you know, streamlining. Is key. Right. Okay. Now, um, let's now talk about the content of the book. So uh, you have such a, a, an extensive variety of, of, um, of activities, right? Uh, how did you come up with these activities or did you just, uh, yeah, I mean, how did you just uh, think this would be good for anxiety or this would not be good or how did you decide which activities to include? Um, so uh, my co-author and I, the way we, we've developed like the way that we write a book together, um, because I, I've never done that before. And it sounds kind of like, how do you, how do you write a book with someone? Right. Um, and so we just have basically a, a page, a Google Doc, and we just like throw everything up on there and just see what sticks. Yeah. And it was funny because this book sort of just wrote itself. It was so fast. My husband at the time, he, he said to me, I, I was working on the book, and I was like, oh, my God, I have to finish it. And he was like, oh, you must be so stressed. And he came home from work that day, and he's like, how's it going? And I was like, oh, I finished it. <laughs> just because it, like, it's just such a rich subject material. Yeah. There's just a lot to say. Right. Now, um, which activities do you think were the most fun to come up with? Which activities do you um, think, this, I have to include this because it's hilarious or this is great? Which one? No, which activities did you uh, think? Oh, which activities did yeah. I did I like the best? Yeah. My favorite one is the, um, it's, well, it's not an activity. It's like a listicle. Okay. But um, obscure diseases you probably don't have <laughs> um, was my favorite, my favorite to research. <laughs> because I, I was like, oh, my God, that's crazy. I definitely don't have that. <laughs> um, because, you know, if you Google, so say you're tired, right? And this is another page. If you, if you Google fatigue, and, uh-huh. and like symptomchecker.com, right. it's like you might have, you could have, you could have like had had too much coffee or you could have cancer. <laughs> like it's just, there's a lot, there's a lot of, of, a lot of options in there. Right. There's a wide spectrum of. But there's possible. a wide spectrum. So it's nice to be like, you know what? I definitely don't have exploding head syndrome. I don't have to worry about that today. <laughs> now, how how stressed were you uh, when you were putting together this book? Was it was it cathartic uh, to a certain oh, extent, or was cathartic. it more tension rising? Well, it's an, that's an interesting question. We started out um, writing mostly about the experience of having anxiety, and then as the book developed, we realized that it really could be used as a cathartic tool as well. So we have you know check ins posted there, you know, throughout the book, like, how's your anxiety today? What's going on? Like, how, what, why is this actually probably going to be okay? Um, and when I was researching uh, facts to make you feel better, just mm-hmm. like about the world generally, they really made me feel better. Mm-hmm. Like the fact that they're, oh, this is a good one. The back slime on a certain species of frog literally makes the flu virus explode. What did, <laughs> what did you mean by that? What did you mean by that? Does it like uh, does it cure flu or what, what, what does it do? <laughs> I don't know. You can scrape the slime off, and I guess if you put it in a petri dish with the flu virus, it kills it. Hmm. Should That's we be licking thing. frogs or? <laughs> yes. And I also found out that uh, scientists recently found a brand new type of aurora, and they named it Steve. Right. Which is amazing. Yes. <laughs> an Aurora named Steve. That's that, that was an interesting fact to read. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you wrote this with someone else. Could you tell us a little bit about uh, your co-author? Oh, I mean, I did it mostly myself. She oh, okay, it. okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Erin uh, Williams, she is, um, she's actually a cancer researcher by day mm-hmm. and an illustrator by night. So she has the strangest combination of, of jobs <laughs> I've ever heard of. Right. A lot of, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that is a strange combination of doing one I thing. And, yeah, that's interesting. Now, uh, how many people in your research, did you find out how many people uh, actually have anxiety but don't know they have anxiety or they haven't come to terms with it? Um, I mean, I think, you know, what's really great. Like there's so much more awareness of the stigma surrounding mental health nowadays. I feel like there's a really big movement, mm-hmm. um, you know, stop the stigma. And, and I, I found that I started writing about mental health maybe four years ago. 
And I was terrified. It was embarrassing. It was felt like this dark, dirty secret. And, um, and then just the more I wrote about it and the more I talked about it, it, it became so obvious to me that everybody has these things mm-hmm. to some extent. And, and they keep them hidden because they think that they're the only ones. And, they're, and just the, it's, you know, they say you're only as thick as your secrets. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I just, I, I have found it very cathartic to, to write about it and, and hear from just thousands of people, you know, who say, me too. Mm-hmm. How, uh, how, uh, how many, uh, how much of a response have you gotten when you've written about anxiety in your blog? Have, has a lot of people commented on your, on your writings or have they been positive? Have they, you know, could you tell us a little bit about that? I would say that it, so when I started writing about it, I noticed very quickly that they were, the, the posts that I would write about mental health would just like explode in terms of readership and sharing. And that was what said to me, oh, this is like, this is something like this is people need to hear about this and they need to hear firsthand experiences because you have young women who've been maybe reading my blog for, you know, eight years and I write about you know, an outfit or a trip I went on with my husband and it looks really nice. And I can imagine thinking, oh, she, like, what problems could she possibly have? And so to finally start just saying, saying them out loud, mm-hmm. um, I think that, that it, it helps. I, I don't know. It's, it's, been a, it's been a very positive experience for me. Okay. Thank you. Um, now, are there any activities in your book that you recommend for specific levels of anxiety or is this just a free for all, whatever you feel like doing, or do you think some activities help uh, different levels? Um, well, the book is loosely organized by, by level of anxiety. So the first chapter is like, I think it's called anxiety is my cardio. Uh-huh. And then the last chapter is called the end is nigh. <laughs> So no. you, you, you uh-huh. do the activities according to how, <laughs> how stressed you I, are. Lo- loosely, loosely. Right. But um, I really like the section on aging because I think we can all relate to sort of being a little bummed out about yes. the, our slow decline <laughs> into <Yes>. decrepitude. <laughs> <laughs> that that is that I read that and I was uh, I was laughing out loud. Also, the sleeping one, the the you know sleeping in beds is for uh, Im- uh, amateurs. Yeah. Amateurs, yeah. So that was, yes, I it thought, is. Yeah, I yeah. am a professional insomniac, and I can fall asleep anywhere. Really? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Now, um, <clears throat> I also noticed that there's some activities that it's not just about letting out, but also to think uh, and take things. In. For example, I remember seeing some activities where you were uh, you asked for to write down, you know, people you love and things you love to do and mm-hmm. things of that nature. Could you tell us how what what effect do you think this will have with someone with uh, a certain level of anxiety? Well, so that that's what I was saying that we started out being just like funny anxiety is funny, and then and then we realized that there was an opportunity to really also use the book to create a space of mindfulness and, and to check in with yourself because, um, you know, we have a page that's like what really matters and things like, you know, kittens, naps, resilience, whether strawberry ice cream has real strawberry pieces in it, because if not, that's total BS. (laughs) Water pressure, water pressure really matters. Um, and then, you know, this place, fill in the blank, this person, um, magic. Right. Now, uh, is there an activity that you uh, recommend for people, or is there an activity that you that was, has been your favorite, or that you uh, would go to if you on a typical day? I think that um, the across the board favorite from friends and people who have read the book is "Color in the Common Grandma." Everybody loves the Common Grandma page. <laughs> what? Why do you think? That? I don't know. <laughs> it's literally a picture of a really nice looking grandma holding a book called The Big Activity Book for Grandmas. Okay. And <laughs> everybody loves it. I like, I mean, I like the ride the subway without touching anyone maze. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I grew up in New York City and I'm really good at, at riding the subway without touching anything. Right. So the, those those would be the activities that you recommend, uh, the, yeah. the maze and the and the coloring. Um, do you think coloring has a certain effect on people? Uh, I mean, because I've noticed uh, uh, these new coloring books, that, but they're not for children; they're they're for adults. Uh, do you think mm-hmm. this um, 
you know, has a has certain effect or has certain uh, helps out somehow? It, it's been kind of stunning. Over the past, what, three or four years, we've seen this huge boom in um, adult coloring books. Yes. Um, I, so I wouldn't call, this isn't exactly a coloring book. It's, it's um, right. a lot more, but there is, obviously, there's plenty of coloring places. And it's just, it's so clear that, that these adult coloring books are filling this very specific need that people have. Um, to calm down and to sit quietly like with themselves and an activity and not be, you know, doing 20,000 things at once. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, So um, what's next for uh, Jordan Reed? Aside from promoting uh, this book, is there anything else that you're working on that we should keep an eye eye out for? Oh, I'm always working on <laughs> I, have a, I have a few different things going at any given moment. Um, but Aaron and I are working currently on our next book, which is going to be about digital detox. Because I think that's something we could all definitely use more of. Could you tell us a little bit about uh, just a sneak peek of what uh, it, it's going to entail? Yeah. No, we're, we're, it's just going to be um, techniques for detoxing, of course, all through the lens of humor and um, just sort of like a back to basics, like, you know, turn off your Siri, <laughs> stop talking to Alexa, <laughs> talk to each other. Right. Okay. Um, is, uh, is there anything you would uh, like to add, Jordan? Um, well, just that the book came out today, May 7th, so I'm very excited about it. And, um, and it's available pretty much anywhere, I believe, that you can, if you can find a book, you can find this book. And, uh, yeah, I'm pumped. Well, Jordan, uh, I want to thank you so much for talking with me today. I uh, I wish you the best with this new book. I'm sure your you. your book will help many anxious people like myself, especially at 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad. Okay, well, I've been talking with Jordan Reed about her new book, The Big Activity Book for Anxious People. It is out now. It's a great summer activity book, and year-round, you can find it at your nearest bookshop, or you can find it also online. I also want to remind our listeners that if you've missed a regularly scheduled broadcast, you can always listen to our interviews on our YouTube channel at Good Books Radio Strong and Cook. Again, this is your host, David Nicosa, signing off, and I want to thank you for listening. <laughs>